Welcome to the show. Soccer season has wrapped up here in Chickasha, and Coach Alexis Dizzarelli, assistant on the men's and women's side, is here on the show to talk about the seasons. This is In the Saddle. Ball is ticked. There you are. You're running for your life. You're a shooting star in all the years. No one knows just how hard you work. But now it shows. In one shining moment, it's all on the line. One shining moment, they're Welcome back to another In the Saddle with Drover Sports. Today we have assistant soccer coach Alexis Pizzarelli on the show to talk about the season. Thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having me. So first let's start off talking about the women. Um, they kind of started a little rocky, but they really came together and really uh, were playing well as a team and made it into the conference tournament by the end of the season. So, Yeah, um, you know, coming in at the start of the season, obviously we didn't start well, that's quite, quite clear and, and everyone knew that, but um, I've got to really um, give credit to the, to the ladies. They, uh, they worked hard throughout the season, we clearly got better. Um, as far as results um, and training habits and um, the approach to the game, I think the girls were always, they were always a team that bought into it, you know. You look at, when you look at a schedule, it's very easy just to see a loss and just chalk it down as, as we didn't play very well. But the reality was we played well in games and we just didn't kind of have any luck at the beginning of the season. And we kept plugging away, working hard. And uh, finally, you know, we started to turn those uh, good performances into actual results, which you need at the collegiate level. And obviously, the, 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 you can see by our results, the last seven games we won five. Uh, five out of seven, which is kind of what we told the girls. We thought that our form should have been the whole season and what, what we're trying to create next year as far as, you know, our mentality. But um, overall, I've got a lot of respect for our ladies and how hard they worked. It's very easy when you have a start like we had to go hide mm -hmm. and blame other people. But, you know, we all took it upon ourselves. We all said we have to get better from the coaching staff down to the players um, and you could see that in training the competition the fire the desire to turn it around was there we stayed together and and it showed at the end you know well and jade ovendale and linda addo they both made all conference uh, jade actually got newcomer of the year um, which is a great honor in the in this tough conference so talk about those two players yeah well first of all i mean linda coming back um, probably as far as far as a coach i've been i've been around a long time as everyone knows but uh she is probably the most improved player that I've ever seen on the, on the women, in the women's game. And, and, and I coach uh, both men and women, and, and I'd even probably go across into the men as well. She came over here, she's very, very frail, and, and uh, you know, we had to do a lot of work trying to get her stronger and, and fitter and faster. And, and she worked so hard on her game and, and has done everything right, and, and she really uh, turned into a great player for us, a fantastic player. And just adding Jade this year um, to, to our strike force, um, you probably had two of the best creative forwards in the conference, hands down. Um, some of the football that those two can play at times is just fantastic to watch. I mean, I find myself on the sidelines just <laughs> applauding sometimes with the, with the skill and, and some of the things that they can do. Um, so credit to Linda, she, she really has worked on her game. Uh, worked hard on it, bought into what we want her to do. And then Jade is, is just an out and out goal machine. I mean, mm -hmm. we knew that we probably, when we signed her, we watched her play, myself and Coach Hampton, probably watched her play 30 minutes and we were, we were like, yeah. yeah, we need this player, <laughs> you know. So she's gonna be um, even more frightening next year, I think. And uh, um, she's probably obviously got a lot to live up to. Now she'll be obviously marked a lot closer as people know about her, but she is so clever at finding ways to create opportunities, not only find the back of the net, but create opportunities for other people. And the thing I like both um, about both those players is they're so coachable. They don't argue, they don't ever um, say, well, 
why am I playing here or what am I doing here? They'll just they'll just say yes, coach, and and get on with it. So two fantastic players. And on to the men, they had another really strong season. They went on an 11-game winning streak toward the end of the season, won the conference championship right. again, um, and made their fifth straight appearance in the NAI men's soccer opening round, um, which is a, a great feat. So talk about that season. Yeah, I mean, it was kind of it was kind of similar in a way to the women's season. Um, we we started off slow, and maybe you know, coming in this season after having such a successful season, the season before, we may have um, kind of lost a little bit of focus. But um, the boys again, um, after the, the, the start that we had four and four, um, like you said, they, they put a great run together, winning 11 in a row. Um, and that was again, just credit to the lads, just getting together and realizing that they had to, to work harder, um, correct a few things and um, uh, they really came on strong and, and uh, had a fantastic year. And uh, could, unfortunately, we fell a little bit short um, and didn't go down to Alabama. But. Yeah, unfortunately, the season ended in a heartbreaking double overtime loss in the cold winds of Missouri Valley. Yeah. Um, what did you guys tell the players after that game? How did you get their spirits back up, or was that possible? It was difficult. I mean, it, it, it was, it, it's hard. We didn't really say too much after the game, and the reason was um, there's not a lot you can say to players when something like that happens. Obviously, the most important thing we told them, we thanked them um, for a great season. We told them it was a great job, um, but we said, you know, unfortunately, it just came down to a little bit of magic, and they made a great play uh, right before uh, the end of the second period of overtime, and we said. Uh, it's unfortunate, but sometimes that happens. And we kind of really talked about the future and hey, what we need to do. We thank the seniors for their fantastic efforts and what they've given to the program over their four years. And we told them, you know, that we believe as a coaching staff and we believe um, as a program that you work hard every day. And as long as you can walk off the field knowing you've given everything, that, that's, a, that's a good thing. And I thought we could have done, we, we did that at, at Missouri Valley, I thought we walked off and said, "Hey, they beat us today, but we did give everything." So, um, and they, the Drovers, again dominated the all-conference list. Um, Coach Hampton got Coach of the Year again. Liam Madden got Player of the Year, and uh, Nicholas Alberto had Offensive Player of the Year. And that doesn't even count the five other players who got first and second team. Right. So, um, talk about talk about those players and coaches and. Yeah. Well, first of all, co you know, with, with Coach Hampton, I've been with Coach Hampton now four years as a player, and and I lose count of how many years as, <laughs> as a coach. But um, he's just a great person to work with. He's someone I'm very close to, both on and off the field. Um, and, and he just has a huge appetite for the game. It's funny, we were uh, coaching against each other yesterday night uh, with our youth teams up in the city and he's, his passion, his desire, he was coaching the game just like he was coaching down at Missouri Valley and he just has a great appetite for the game and, and a hunger to win. And, and he really cares about the college and the community here in Chickasha. So it's, it's just great to be around him and, and feed off that vibe that he creates. So a good person to work for. Um, and then as far as the players are concerned, um, you can't replace the players that we lost. It's just, it's, they, they are fantastic individuals. All, all you try to do is, is almost make sure that when they come back here, they're excited to watch the new players play and the program still, you know, moving forward as they, as they've, as they have done. And Scott Parkinson, for example, fantastic leadership qualities. Um, he quite honestly gave everything he could for the program and, and we're very, very, um, happy that he came here and, and he's created um, a great uh, tradition here as far as the, the work he's put in and, and what, he, what he's told players and, and those players will carry that on and they'll give more experience to the other players coming in. So he's really set the ball, ball rolling in that aspect. Perry and Nicholas, both two forwards that were fantastic for us. Again, very similar as far as the way they, they've bought into the way we play. They work very, very hard on the training field. They work very, very hard um, at trying to become better players and they never stop trying to do that. And uh, um, on their day, they were almost unplayable. Um, so again, you can't really replace um, that type of strike force. All you can do is, 
is make sure you're doing the best job you can at bringing them in. And um, Phil is another uh, another lad, uh, Phil Pryor, that's came in and and uh, he's worked very very hard at his game as well. He was more of a utility player where Scott, Nicholas, and Perry were kind of set in in where they played. He was quite a talented individual, um, so he could play a number of spots. Very very athletic player, and just another player as well that would do anything you that you asked of him. And uh, he he is going to come and join us now as a graduate assistant and and just finish off his school and 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 get on the other side of the field. So it'd be interesting to see how uh, how he uh, how he enjoys that experience um, as well. But again, great players. Um, we were very happy that they that they chose to come to USAO, and they're the type of players that will always look out for for USAO. They'll always be in touch with us. We have a lot of players that do that. So great. Well, um, thanks for being on the show. We look. I hope you wish you best of luck in recruiting and in the off season. And we look for a great 2014 season out yeah. of both teams. All right. Well, thank you for having me. Now it's time for fan of the week. Each week we ask you a USAO or USAO Athletics trivia question, and the first person to email us the correct answer wins their very own In the Saddle prize. Last time we asked you about Siobhan Scott's the free throw shooting practices, and Carter Dennison got it right. He shoots till he gets 100. Congratulations. This week's question is, Coach Vizzarelli mentioned his favorite quality about Jade Ovendale and Linda Addo. What was it? Be the first one to email us at USAO in the saddle at yahoo.com with the correct answer to win your prize. Well, that's our show. Make sure to tune in next week. We've got one more episode before the break. We'll see you then on In the Saddle. <laughs>